Okay, we'll record. To okay, there we go. I'm going to try to record to the crowd, the um, cloud, because I may try to, I may have to stop Loom. My computer's already kind of getting loud, so. Okay, ladies. Somebody's wanting in, but I have an overlay. There we go. Okay, so I think I let them in. So, all right, guys. So functional and holistic medicine seeks to reveal how and why illness occurs and seeks to address the root cause of a disease in an individual. Holistic care integrates the mind, body, and the soul. So you're going to see in this going forward, there's going to be so many different aspects you can do. Um, you can niche this. You don't have to, you don't have to feel overwhelmed with, with how much kind of different this is or how many different things you, you know, you'll feel like it'll just be overwhelming. Like once you start going down, um, we were talking about the wormhole and earlier today, and um, it's like so easy to go down, but you can also find your niche. Nikki is one of my gals and she's niching down in the spiritual side of things. And she's literally helping people be able to grow themselves spiritually. So, or, you know, like there's gut health, there's so many different ways we can do that, but I'm going to give you a really good overview today on, you know, functional medicine and how, what it would look like to start your own practice. We're going to talk numbers. We're going to talk money. I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable about that because the truth of the matter is, is that you have to be reimbursed. And if you're going to be able to give back to your family, if you're going to be able to provide for your family. And as a side note, I don't know, I share things all the time. I'm like, I don't know if I should share this or not, but you know, I really... I believe that, well, for one nurse practitioner, there's a lot of saturation in the market. The economy is not looking super hot, right? I really and truthfully believe that everybody more now than ever really and truthfully needs something to bring in a supplemental income at least. But this is, guys, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. So whenever I first started, I just recently, so my online income matched and surpassed my NP income. And I quit my full-time job. I'm still working full-time because I'm in that 90 days. I had to give them 90 days notice. I'm still in that time frame, and I have I'm about halfway done with that. And then I'll be free from having to work full-time. But um, whenever I, whenever I switched and I, and I did that, um, you know, it gives me so much more time to be able to be with my family because I built that business in pockets of time. And so don't feel bad about, about wanting that or needing that for your family because it's an important part. So this has all been submitted for CE. This is pretty much what this is saying. Um, this has been submitted for CE and that, you know, those of you who are going to qualify for the CEs and are here, you know, for the, for the duration of the trainings, you'll be able to, once it's all done, which that could take a couple of months, but once it's all done, you'll have a pre, you'll have a, a post-test quiz and um, a final exam for those who actually go forward to the full program. So I'm giving you the first full day, four days, just completely for free, giving you information. But those who actually go on and continue and do, you know, the full program with us and wants to get certified. And Nikki, I haven't even shared this with everybody yet, but we have pending um, to those who go through this course. One, I'm talking to people about boards about making this a board certification like the nurse, nursing board, same thing that you would get a certification in holistic medicine, same thing that you would get, you know, board certification CCRN. Um, I am working to make, because we don't, there's not currently a course that does this specifically for nurses and practitioners. Functional medicine out there, there's a lot of them, a lot of programs, they will charge you $10,000, $20,000, and it does not change your scope of practice. It does not give you a board certification. And it's open to anybody and everybody. I truthfully believe that you know, nurses, practitioners, even, I mean, I believe MDs and DOs also fall under this umbrella. I, I believe that we're at a different standard of care than most people. I'm not saying that functional medicine doesn't do things a fantastic way or that naturopaths don't have um, really great models as well, but we do focus more on evidence-based, which is they focus on just clinical-based. And both have their benefits on that, but I'm kind of hardwired for evidence-based and I want something that's going to be more that way. So that's why, and the nursing boards agree with me. So that's why we're talk, we're in talk. Okay. We're in talk for that happening for this course. Um, but it is going to be submitted either way. You will have enough uh, credits at the end of this course. It's going to be a 48 hour course to be able to get board certified. So you can say that you're actually board certified holistic advanced practitioner or, or nurse one way or the other, but it's been submitted. So 
Um, okay, so like I said, we're gonna talk in numbers just because I also want you to know that like this is worth your time to, to learn and to find about the functional medicine model. So functional medicine is an $18 billion industry, which is pretty huge. And the great thing about it is it's expected to grow by over 210 billion over the next few years. That's mind blowing, right? Like that's huge. That's a really good opportunity for us, especially being people who are already in healthcare and already have already have that background. And it blows my mind, but at the same time, it doesn't. Because like I, I kind of started to say, and I digressed, whenever I put in my time off from my current, my current job, I've been telling people what I'm doing. And a lot of people I've been working with, like I've been using functional medicine for a while in my actual clinic. My employer hasn't always been happy with that, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of one of those people that, you know, they kind of slap my hand and sometimes I get away with things. But, you know, it's not like I'm, you know, I'm not, they just... I don't know, the conventional med model is just different. They, they don't really want you running functional medicine tests all the time or doing those trainings. So I paid for them on my, on my own, right? Like I've learned how to do this stuff on my own, out of my own pocket, but I feel like it's worth it. Um, but a lot of patients have said, are you gonna start your own functional medicine? I wanna go with you. <laughs> and I said, well, honestly, I signed a non-compete clause. So I hate to say this, but I can't actually take you on. I'm not kidding you, probably every other patient that I have said, and I live out in the middle of nowhere. I live in a very, like there's a sign in my town that says if it's, if it ain't fried, it ain't food. So there's a huge notion in my town on not the healthiest, right? Our grocery store has very little vegetables and fruit and stuff in it. When it's, when it's not like moldy and stuff, honest to goodness, like it's just, I mean, it's, it sits there because, but there is still, even, even knowing that there's a huge population, even in my town, like this is not a, you know, this isn't like an up, upscale town where you see whole foods or anything like that. Even in my small scale town, people are asking for that. And they say, we'll pay out of pocket. Like you don't have to like, you know, like I, like they want this, like people really and truthfully want this. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, so like I said, patient providers are fed up with short visit times. We kind of already, you know, I kind of already started talking about that, but it's really true. And I don't know about y'all, drop it in the chat if this is something that resonates with you. I enjoy whenever I've made a connection with the patient and I'm changing their life much more so than I ran through, you know, I got done with four to five patients every single hour. Like to me, I feel like I've actually made a difference and that's why I went into this field in the first place is feel like I'm making a difference in lives. And it is really hard to actually, now I do like, I do time hacking. I have girls in here who, who attest to that. And I have, you know, we can, we can chart with the best of them and knock them out and get like, we know how to do a uh, position uh, conversation so we can get in and out fast because that's the, that's the standard we'll put up against. And that's what we kind of have to do and we get it done. But honestly, I don't feel like it's my best self. It's not where I feel the most fulfilled. I feel the most fulfilled whenever I've spent time with somebody. I literally had somebody. So whenever there's a handful of patients that I said, okay, like I will, I will. Recorded, but I told them like, I will still keep you, you know, I was like, I'm not gonna be your primary care, but I will still like work with you on the deeper level. And they literally cry because they're like, they do not want to have to be forced to going back to somebody who's just going to like always run them through. So there's a need for it. There's a huge need for it. Um, people no longer want to sit just in silence and fire alarms. So this is actually, I can't remember her name. I actually heard her on a podcast, but it was a nurse practitioner who also does functional medicine. And I thought it was a beautiful, I don't think she's the first one to use this analogy, but this is the first time that like I heard it and it really hit home with me. Functional, okay, so conventional medicine silences the alarms. And you're gonna see, you know, in future, in future slides what this kind of means, but it silences the fire alarms, whereas functional medicine puts out the fire. And what we mean by that is, I'm gonna turn my phone over because it's distracting me a little bit. Um, what we mean by that is let's say like eczema, for example. Eczema, how do we treat that in, how do we treat that in conventional medicine? Can anyone like unmute themselves? Steroids. Steroid. Steroids. Steroids. What are we pills. doing with steroids? Absolutely. Allergy pills. Yes, allergy pills, yep. We're suppressing symptoms, right? We're turning off that smoke alarm. 
where the body's saying something's wrong, something's wrong, and we're suppressing that. Functional medicine will go into, and there is, I have tons of slides that we're going to talk about this when we get to dermatology, but in a very small nutshell, what functional medicine does is it puts out the fire. It finds the actual things that are triggering it, whether it's heavy metals, whether it's mold, whether it's gut imbalance, whether it's all of the above. It actually corrects that. That is what is so awesome. And we all know, especially with kiddos, like, yes, the topical steroid that isn't systemically being absorbed by a huge amount, but it, we know that it still is. We know that there's still some studies that say, you know, it might actually inhibit a little bit of growth. Um, like the, it's just, it's not really, and it's most likely going to be a lifelong thing. Now, certainly some kiddos kind of grow out of it, meaning that their body gets, gets used to that exposure and they quit having the symptoms, but a lot of times not. Also, how do you, how, like, how often do we see adults who end up developing psoriasis or eczema later in life because their system is finally broke down. Their system is finally like done with it. Like, like totally, like let's set off the fire alarm, right? And we just suppress it with, with uh, steroids. So I just thought that was a really good, and people are truthfully getting tired of that. And I've never believed whenever I used to get rather triggered when I heard somebody say, you know, talking about conventional medicine and saying that they want to keep you sick in order to keep you coming back. I do not believe that there is a single nurse or a single doctor who actually practices that for that with that under that model. I don't believe that. However, learning what I've learned, I question why we are trained that way. Did you see what I'm saying? Okay, good. I'm glad that came off good because I'm not like, learning what I knowing knowing what I know now. I question why we why we've been taught that when knowing that there are so many other there are better ways in certain aspects. Um, and we know that chronic disease is on the rise, especially autoimmunity. I've heard some people say that America has the highest levels of autoimmunity. I, I find some conflicting studies on that. However, we rank really high. We rank really high. Nikki is telling me something. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> that it's what we're eating. But a lot of it is, <laughs> I yeah. I was charting too, and I was like, it's what we eat. <laughs> oh, don't even, Okay. I know, when I know. Talk about toxicity in food. Oh, it makes me so mad, especially with what's advertised towards children. Ooh, 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 ooh. So Tiffany, I'm also you know, the person that's complaining, saying it's what we're eating, but I'm eating bad things right now. <laughs> so I mean, you know. well, see, and in the full in the full training, I actually have an entire portion because I truthfully believe that the root cause is like part of it's our diet. Part of the root cause is going to be your diet. But the real root cause is, is mindset and how we overcome that and overcoming food addictions and food itself is addictive, like it's made addictive. So overcoming those things as well, that's all part of um, like Mindset Academy and that's all going to be a part of the full course. So we're going to dive into that, you know, in, in the full course, uh, but you're absolutely right. A big portion of it is, is the food and oh my gosh, the food that are advertised towards children, it angers me. It legitimately angers me. Um, but chronic disease is on the rise and people don't, people don't want to stay on pills and, and there's a part of it, right. That they have to kind of, we have to start making changes in order to get them off of the pills. But a lot of people want off of pills. I had a patient come to me yesterday and he said, I want off my pills, all my pills. And him and I, we've always had this like back and forth thing, you know? And I was like, okay. And he was like, what? I was like, okay. I was like, we can, I was like, we can, you know, we have to make some changes and stuff. But he's actually afraid, which I don't know, y'all, y'all, y'all decide whether you think this is, you know, accurate. Or not. He's afraid that, that they are going to be running out of supplies of medications and he doesn't want to be on a medication that he needs and then it absolutely be stopped because of the shortages and everything. I mean, I see some head nodding and, and I don't, I don't think he was totally crazy for that. You know, I really don't. I, I mean, I, I think that we should prepare for, for what we can. So I'm excited for that, right? Because I like pulling medications off of people. Actually, one of the branches that I would like to make this kind of transition into is, you know, that's one of the ways that we're going to talk about niching and specialty and all that stuff, I think tomorrow. Um, but that's one of the ways, or that's one of the things I've, I've, I've thought about that I would think would be awesome to start for, uh, for nurse healers to start the initiative on becoming the first group of providers who, who are starting a, this is something else I'm probably going to get trademarked. Um, prescription reduction specialists. 
where we're, we're helping patients get off of some of those medications. I think there's, gonna be a huge, there's already a huge need for it. And then I see some in the chat. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the chat here in a minute. Um, and they want their health back. People are getting really sick, guys. Like we see that people are getting really, really sick um, and they're losing faith in the conventional model. Think about like vaccines and politics, right? A lot of my patients, they trust me and they ask me and I'm very transparent about what I believe in vaccinations. And you know, we won't get into a debate on vaccinations, but that's something that history will tell us that you can't always trust whenever people are being told you know, to do a certain thing in their health. History has told us that. So I don't blame a lot of people for being skeptical by any means, but there's a lot of skepticism there and we get caught in that. And that can be frustrating on both sides because us as individuals, are we wanting to be, you know, do we want to harm people? Absolutely not. But people are getting really skeptical of things. And like I said, I don't, you know, we don't want to get into a debate or anything like that, but that is the truth of the, of the matter is that people are getting skeptical or losing faith in conventional medicine um, and big pharma being tied to big pharma. You know, a lot of people, how many people, whether this is right or wrong, it's, it's wrong, but how many people have been told, you know, will you, how much do you get paid if I take this medication? I've had patients say that to me. I said, I don't. Nikki says, yes. Like, I, I'm like, I don't, I don't get any kickback at all for you taking this certain medication. Uh, but that skepticism is there. And big pharma is no joke with the insurance companies. That is, I mean, that is a hot mess. I will say that, you know, and stand by it. I don't have to dance around that point. There is a lot of, of, of things going on there. So from the RN to, R, to uh, NP perspective, like I was saying, job saturation is real. And you can really make, you can be helping people at a very deep level with this model and really protecting your future for your family and having that secondary income or replacing your income, you know, whatever your goals are, whatever your goals are. So a lot of people, maybe some of you have experienced this. If you have, I'd love to hear your story if you feel, if you feel compelled to share it with us. But good news, your labs are totally normal. Now, how many of you think, I don't know, I think this person is totally fine and they're just crazy, right? Or how many times do you think, man, I know there's something we're missing but everything is normal. Like, I don't know what else to do for them. And I have found, I have found really awesome. Like I say awesome. It's not an awesome disease. I don't wish this upon anybody, of course, but really exciting. So exciting to help people with fibro, to help people with, with lupus, to help people with these kind of real obscure uh, diagnoses and diseases that you know, functional medicine, I mean, conventional medicine may help and may not. And being able to give them that hope and being able to give them something that can change their life. Like that is like my patients that I, I, I am helping, you know, I'm not, I'm not releasing them are those patients because there's nobody else to do that for them. Right. Like, I mean, I feel like my first, my first thing is to do no harm and making sure that they get that. So it's like good news, all normal but something's wrong. It's really not good news, right? Like patients are actually discouraged by that. And then they think that we think that they're, you know, making it up or they feel crazy or they start taking it on as a personal assault. And really and truthfully, it is that in some ways, conventional medicine doesn't, doesn't look at the full picture. Um, okay. So like I said, I already kind of touched on this. I get ahead of myself a lot of the times, but multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, uh, Chagrin's, chronic pain, RA, Hashimoto's, and that's just naming like a few of them. That's just naming a few of them. And this, these are all things here that one step of correcting this is gut health. And guys, like I've always, I've always worked with gut health, uh, for the longest time though, the only thing I did was prescribe Restora because it was the best, best probiotic prebiotic that I, that I knew of. There is so much more to that. We're going to get into, we're going to get into that and showing like how, like whenever you correct the good ones, then the bad ones go down. Um, we're going to talk some about herbals. We're going to talk about the good and the bad of herbals because herbals are not something that it's just, just because an herbal, it has no side effects. You know, there are certain side effects we have to be watching for and making sure like you don't want to prescribe licorice and someone who has hypertension. There's certain things there that we have to be aware of. Um, and I believe that, you know, conventional medicine has double-edged sword. I believe that, you know, functional medicine and, and naturopaths can too. And we don't want to be blinded by, you know, just staying tunnel vision on, on one way, but all of these right here, I'll tell you chronic pain. We are not dealing with that. Right. Right. The narcotics are not good for people. 
I do not like having to refer people to chronic pain and I won't, I, I won't take on new patients. I, the patients that are already in my clinic, I've, I've treated them for, with narcotics. I don't like that, but, um, but you know, I've, I've kept a few of them on, but it's just, it's, it's, it's a horror. You don't even feel good, right? Like I can, you can tell like my everything dropped because I'm like, I don't even feel good about that. Um, so one of the things that we look at in, in functional medicine is the socioculture factors. Um, this is really exciting. Like this is just this, I just took some pearls here to kind of give you all some nuggets that I got excited about. Um, but even prenatal exposure, let me see if I can get, let me change this. I can change it so I can kind of, I can see the slides. I don't know if that, if it messed it up for y'all or not. Um, so mother's exposure to high stress can change the child and even decrease their amount of serotonin that they make. Um, illness while they are delivering or pregnant. So this is something that as a functional practitioner, you're actually going back and looking at these things. Um, whether or not they are, I don't see it on here. Okay, I do see it on here. Um, C-section, whether or not they were born via C-section or vaginal birth. Does anyone, okay, Angela, you can't answer. <laughs> Does anybody else know, does anybody else know what that, like a big part that that changes in, let's say their immune system for a child who comes in and like they have, they have eczema and they were C-section delivered. Angela's like, I want to answer. I want to answer. She already knows though. <laughs> does anybody know? Anyone want to answer? Okay, Angela, tell them. Well, I don't necessarily have like statistics. I don't know the statistics of it, but I have an amazing article, like research article on this and how C-sections and missing the actual natural vaginal flora through a vaginal birth causes all sorts of like respiratory conditions, eczema, yes. need for antibiotics later, like all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff with kids as they get older. Yes. Like asthma is the big one and eczema is the big one. Like those are like number two, like number one, number two with, if you have a C-section birth. Yeah. But I have like a huge article on it. <laughs> they don't get exposed to that lactobacilli that they should. And then they have dysbiosis straight, like right out the bat, right out the bat. And then like, God forbid they get an ear infection and we have to prescribe an antibiotic for them. Right. And then they're, then they really have, then they really have problems. So even going back to that part, like that's, that's where this legitimately work looks at the root cause in, in functional medicine and correcting that for people. So it's just, it's incredible. The little things that we don't realize make such a huge, huge, um, huge thing. Prenatal tiny, uh, Tylenol use can increase the risk for impaired detox of a child. There's a lot of studies on Tylenol. Like I, you know, I'll be honest that I did, I think I did take Tylenol. I wasn't above it. I remember considering it if I didn't take Tylenol with my last pregnancy, I don't think I took any of my first. I had really bad, bad pain with my second. So I'm not, there's no like judgment here, but I mean, I've always known that Tylenol is not as safe as we all, you know what I mean? Like being over the counter and it has a lot of problems. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of studies on it with toxicity that's pretty scary, pretty scary, but that's, that's one, for instance, that has been, has been proven over and over with studies. Um, and then increased risk for neurological impairment. We, we talked about that. Um, and you can see uh, some of my sources down there too. Oh, actually I can close this. I'm like trying to move it where I can see it, but okay. Um, so sociocultural factors, finding out how that influences them, like that's something else to, to look into, seeing what they have access to, what they've been exposed to, um, if they've had um, chronic stress exposure, changes in the brain chemistry and makeup, especially like with ADEs and childhood stress. We know that that changes the physiology of their mind. And going back to that and finding it and, and actually working backwards with people to, to help them overcome that and not just starting them on, on a medication that we know 
can have deleterious effects on their on their health later on. And like I said, I'm not anti-medication, I'm not anti-prescription. There are a lot of people who that is the route they want. They don't want to dig deep. They don't want to find the answer. They want a quick fix. Those aren't our people in functional medicine. Um, but so that's why I'm saying good and bad. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dogging either one. Um, but social determinants of health, social needs of health, and um, any bias of the practitioner themselves. And those are all things that can maybe have affected them in the past, maybe it's affecting you in your current, in your current scenario and being sure to screen for that and make sure that you're being cognizant of it. Um, and incident mediation and triggers respectively, uh, meaning that what has either caused that made it worse, okay? So this is something I really wanted to dive in deep on our first four days, but it's like, it's huge. So I didn't, I left the slide in just to say like, and we're going to talk a lot about toxins. I'm actually going to bring in a specialist in chelation therapy and, and detoxing heavy metals. Detoxing heavy metals, one things that we can do, we can do that naturally. Um, but it is, it's a very complex thing. It's, it's not super simple. So that's, that's one of the things, like, this is one of the things I learned when I was looking into functional medicine, I thought, wow, I thought this was just going to be changing someone's diet and getting them exercising. I had no idea that there were so many different things that we can look at and help them with and change. And that was one of them. But actually detoxing from heavy metals, it's a huge thing. Detoxing from, from chemicals is another thing. Um, and this is something that we're, we just totally miss. Like my mind was pretty blown whenever one of my patients that I've helped, this has been years ago, but it was helping her detox from mold guys. She was so sick all the time. One time I walked in to see her and I laughed, but it, she looks at me and bust her heart. She was just sick for literally, I think the third time in three months and with like another cold, another illness. And she looked up at me and she said, when I walked in, she said, I go around licking doorknobs so I can see you. <laughs> and she was joking. Right. But then it made me laugh, but I felt so bad for her. And she was so tired and her weight gain was, it, it was, she's still beautiful. I hate even talking about that, you know, because there's so many negative connotations with it, but she's still beautiful, but the weight gain was bringing her down. She felt, she felt down on herself. She was fatigued. She was tired and she was not herself. She was kind of cranky. And when we detoxed her from mold, whenever she was able to actually get out of that environment, we changed her environment. We detoxed her from mold. Guys, I haven't seen her in like over a year. Like that's, and like, that's, you know, a testimony to her. She's, she's young. She's probably due for, for her regular labs, but most people don't do the regular labs if they're not, if they're not sick, you know, and I still see her. She's actually a Facebook friend of mine. Um, like she's still in my practice. I just don't see her. I don't have to see her personally. So that, I mean, that's something that I don't know about y'all, but I did not get training in that in, in both of neither one of my bachelor's or my doctorate. I didn't get training in that. I didn't learn anything about that. And that's something that we're literally missing. I even sent her to a lot of different specialists and they all said, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. There was something wrong with her. I saw her progression. I knew, I knew that something was wrong because I knew her. They just saw her as a sick person that, you know, they thought she was pining for attention or something. And I, I knew her as a person. I knew that wasn't her. Um, but fibro, I've also had a patient, you know, one of those loose fibro versus lupus diagnoses, you know, they'll come up positive on the titer and then they come up negative and we're not sure. Um, and it was metal toxins, probably from her vaping, finally got off of the vaping. And that's when things started to kind of turn around. So hers was actually pretty simple in that we just stopped that. And then she started to get a lot, she started to get better uh, slowly over time. And now that's been three months and she actually feels really fantastic. Um, and then neurological uh, function, cancers. Oh my gosh, guys, when we, when we start talking about toxin stuff, well, Okay, so you maybe who who here has seen the Skittles lawsuit? I know Angela has we talked about it a thousand times together. You have seen that? Yeah. I mean, guys, like they know that this stuff is not healthy in our body, right? But when we as providers know to screen for them, when we know their symptoms and we know, okay, like what are you eating? What is it? And like knowing that, like knowing that that can be neurotoxic and knowing those things, there are pages. There's thousands of them. We can't ever know all of them, but you can know the top ones. You can know the top ones, recognize that, make a simple change for them and completely change their life. And sometimes it's not a simple change, but 
Sometimes it is, sometimes it's just elimination. But the Skittles things makes me so mad, right? I've already, so I've already talked about this. I get ahead of myself. I'm sorry, I get ahead of myself. But this is why I started implementing, implementing the, functional, the functional medicine um, and integrative medicine. I don't think we are going to be able to go. So I think I've already actually kind of talked about, we've already talked about her indirectly. I get so ahead of myself. Oh, no, we have not actually. <laughs> we have not talked about this person. Okay. So this person here had, um, was not breastfed for very long, right? A little bit, but not for very long. Um, had major T childhood and adult trauma, severe depression and anxiety, uh, was on the SAD diet, which if y'all know what that is, that's the SAD diet, the standard American diet, right? So we're void of prebiotics, probiotics, uh, we don't have, and that's like, we, we've went so, we went so macro focused in this world on weight loss that we've screwed ourselves up. And that is what's making us, that's what's making us uh, gain weight, and autoimmunity and everything. We're focused on, not that this isn't, not that this is important, balancing macros is important, but we focus so much on fat carbs, low fat, low carb, all of this stuff. We completely ignore the fact that food is medicine and the lack of it is illness. That if we're not getting in those phytonutrients, if we're not getting in all of those things, the prebiotics, the probiotics, it messes up our gut health. Um, 80% right? I think it's 80%. So it's off the top of my head. Angela, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 80% of serotonin is made in the gut. And whenever your gut is inflamed and mad at the world, what happens? You get depressed. That happens to people, right? We're not treating anxiety and depression like that. So this person had extreme gut problems. Um, you see down here, um, at one point, you can even eat baked chicken with no seasonings steamed veggies, like went on the strictest of diets, paleo extreme diets, trying to fix things, right? Scopes at both ends or up one end, you know, down the other, um, was taking magnesium and then went to a specialty doctor, was found to have torturous colon, probably from the years of stress and the years of methane from SIBO, which the GI specialist in the city did not know anything about this, or at least not enough to tell them about this. It was causing this torturous colon, chronic constipation, making everything worse. And the only thing the specialist said was, you know, continue the magnesium, I think it's a really great thing. And that was it, right? And then just left to, you know, taking, if anyone's ever been constipated and you, don't fix the underlying cause. Every time you take a constant, um, every time you take a medication to, to unblock you, you build a resistance to it and it quits working and you get further down this wormhole of nothing's helping me, nothing's helping me. This person right here, this case study is actually me. I was at a point where I legitimately could not even eat anything. Like that was in the past. My first, so this was a long jury. We won't go into it, you know, huge, but I first started implementing with, you know, just a probiotic and that made enough to where I could start eating again. That was a long time ago. Okay. And well, not a long time ago, that was before the birth of my child and things got better, but then they got worse again. And then I started looking into, okay, I got to fix this, right? The GI doc said nothing for me. I learned about SIBO, methane overgrowth, or I mean, uh, methane producing bacteria actually paralyzes the gut. I thought that I had like, I thought that I had delayed emptying. I thought that I, um, help me, what am I? Um, diabetics always get it, uh, neuropathy of the gut. What am I, or not neuropathy. Um, gastroparesis. Thank you, gastroparesis. I thought I have gastroparesis. Like, I swear, I feel like everything slowed down. Thank you so much. Um, and it was the methane from the methane producing microorganism overgrowth that I had. And now correcting that, everything's moving along and I can't tell you how incredible it is. And even like I had a patient the other day who we're just starting this, I don't have any outcomes on her yet, we're just starting. But she was saying, I just feel really gross. Like I, I'm cranky. She's like, this constipation thing, I'm like, well, heck yeah, it does. And I just told her about everything I just told y'all about, you know? 
same here, right? Like mom is a lot happier now and it's in freaking credible. And most people, I think not most people, but I know a lot of people that is what starts them on this is that they have something themselves. And through that, they become passionate about it. I actually saw one of my business coaches, um, she posted a, a thing about how majority of people build a business based upon what they're passionate about. And that's a reflection of their trauma in their, in their life. And that's completely true for, for a lot of us, maybe not all of us, but a lot of us, it is. Um, so yes, that is, that's my personal story. Um, this was just a client. They, they said this to me, so I didn't, you know, I didn't get, um, I just used their initials here, but, um, it just, it legitimately changes, changes your life. Like, I'll be honest guys, whenever I, you know, started working online and, um, I was able to build up a business in three months, I passed and surpassed, I matched and surpassed my NP income. I thought that I wanted to leave medicine altogether. And patients like this is what's made me realize that I don't want to, but I want to leave the actual, the conventional model. Solve my acne, extreme. So I'm reading in the chat, extreme bloating, migraines, panic attacks, depression, all from a gut health perspective over the last 20 years. 100% in with that, yeah. I mean, it's it really does blow my mind. And that's why I say that all of these things all of these things, it just, it, it does blow my mind um, that we're not trained on it. And it does, that's part of the thing that makes me a little bit skeptical about why medicine has stayed stuck there, why we keep on being pushed into learning only the things that are literally putting a bandaid on it. Like whenever I was prescribed, you know, IBS, IBD medications, they were treating the symptoms. It was not treating the cause, <laughs> was not treating the cause. And you have to keep on coming back for that. This terrible thing, terrible thing about it is that it just, it gets so terrifying how it's like, I couldn't eat chicken. You know what I mean? I couldn't eat baked chicken. I couldn't eat vegetables anymore. Like it was just, it was so bad. Um, and I've already shared this a little bit with y'all. I do believe, I apologize ahead of myself, but why I'm teaching this to others is that I, I do believe that nurse practitioners and nurses are key to implementing this. There are a lot of providers who won't even open an ear to it. And there's a huge need for it. Like we've already been talking about and shared a lot of testimonies for, um, we already want to take that time with people, most of us, you know, but you don't have to, but I want you, I want you to hear me now and say in that you don't, that does not mean that you have to trade your time for money on a huge basis. It does not mean that you have to work extreme hours. We're going to talk about that, um, we definitely don't have time to go into it today, but whenever we start talking about retainer models and we start talking about um, how you can structure this to where it's a literal win-win for the patient and for you in that you can spend 20 hours a week, you can spend less than that, and you can literally match your income right now. Meaning like when I say match income, I'm, I put that as about an average of a hundred thousand and you can do that conservatively. And like 20 hours is the max that you'd be scheduled for, but you probably wouldn't even see patients that much. And we're not even, we haven't even touched on all the other different ways that you can make income. And on top of like, my favorite thing is course creation. I love course creation because I like building something that people can purchase online. That's different. That's definitely different than the functional medicine, but I do, I am going to include it um, in the trainings because it's a part to keep, it's a part to freedom. Um, but, oh, and I already, I already shared with y'all, I don't know if I was recording at that time. So I will say this, I will say this again, if y'all don't mind, but um, I, I think this is going to be a huge opportunity. I want to eventually, maybe it was already, but uh coining for us, you know, prescription reduction specialists for those who, who want to kind of go into that and just, you know, not being anti-conventional medicine, but helping people get off the medications where they can. Like I have, I, my mind was blown and I've seen, and I shouldn't be blown because I've had, you know, I've had patients who've made big differences in their blood pressure, even with natural remedies, um, even without, I can't get everyone to do the DASH diet, unfortunately. But there are natural ways that we can get people off of the medications and it doesn't have the side effects like metoprolol. You know, it's what my, my other patient who's afraid of, you know, he's like, well, what if they run out of metoprolol supplies? And then I go into AFib, like, don't I need to be weaned off that? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's a whole another situation. I'm like, well, we have to, we have to dig a little deeper. And he's like, okay, <laughs> all right. But, um, you know, things like that, that, that we can help them with. Um, and a lot of people just want, and gosh, golly, prescriptions for 
freaking expensive. They are so expensive without insurance and finding who's in cahoots with who is just ridiculous. And we're not paid our worth. I think we're all nurses on here, right? I'm pretty sure we are. We're not paid our worth. Most of us are paid at half the, the um, half the salary or, you know, seeing however it's, you know, however it pans out, whether it's salary or if it's um, RVUs, usually at about half of what our physician counterparts are. We're doing the same job. Most of us are working really pretty autonomously, if not 100% autonomously. I know that's not everybody and also everybody's story. Um, and some people do work more as a phys physician extender and they enjoy that role. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for those who are not doing that, don't you think that we should be paid, you know, at the same, at the same rate? And, and a lot of them are working many more hours, right, Nikki? Working more hours than the counterparts and getting paid less. I'm sitting here still working and I've been here since 8 a.m. And it's 7 and I do this every day. I usually don't get home till like 8.30. Yeah. That's and the right. doctors are home or on vacation. I don't know how they do it. I don't, I'm getting ready to ask for my hours to be reduced right now, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, and side note, we won't get into it too far, but we, well, you and I will talk after the call on that. So we just and healer to home does work for the most part, but I have a hard time implementing that sometimes in these situations. But if I could make my brain work better with healer to home, it works. So it works. You have to practice it. It's there. It, it works. Yep. You have to practice it. And yep. listen, while I, well, <laughs> here's my little timer I've carried around today too. Good. <laughs> so I did get. The, I'm a lot better today than I have been. I will say. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad, sister. Um. So let's see. Here we'll go. I think we're probably just going to go until the hour and then and then stop. So it, I may end up having to kind of tweak what we're going to talk about when. Um. But let's just say like even if okay, this is for one on one, right? Which my girls know that I don't, I don't really, I don't, I like one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't advocate for it a lot because I don't want you trading your time for money in the long run. However, even if, if you're doing a, if you're doing, so there's a difference. We're going to look, we're going to see those differences, you know, coming up coach versus practitioner, like how you're, whether you're a functional medicine practitioner, whether you're doing more of a coaching standpoint, but we won't have to have the coach title, those who go through the program, because. Um, it's going to be trademarked and all of this is going to be certified and everything. But um, let's just say, let's just like, let's just keep it at this like simple model, right? Like doing kind of what you're doing right now and not making anything completely hugely huge change here. Let's say you're charging like 50 to $150 per visit per your niche or what you wanna do. That is so extremely, extremely doable to charge. In many niches, especially if we're talking like you know, men's clinic hormone, like there's tons of different things that you can do and you could charge 200, 250, you know, people will pay out the wazoo to feel better. Um, but $50 to $150, four to eight patients per day, however long you want to see them on that. And then an average of 260 work days per year. So there's the math. And then that's 52, 52,000 to about 312,000. So if you're wanting to work full time and implement this, you could probably be making more than what you're doing. And this is a very simple model. This isn't, we're not even talking about retainers or anything like that yet, because you can make a lot more money in different ways. But this is just kind of like, if you're just doing simple math, right? So even just one patient a day, 39,000 on the side, like that's really not that much. Now it might be, we maybe still be, you know, too much for somebody, but I'm just saying like you can make considerable income and then wean back your hours. I really believe that one of the best time hacks in the world is building up a side income. Guys, that's how I was able to go. Technically, the only reason why I'm going part-time and not completely quitting is because um, I have to stay W2 for a little bit longer in order to be able to do um, home building with my husband and build our own home. So, but like you could replace your income and then be able to be free and have your own time. You see what I'm like, I just believe that that is the biggest time hack in the world because it gives you freedom of choices. Um, yeah, and I didn't even, like I said, I didn't factor in the niches or anything to go up to, to 250. So this is the starting rate for practitioners. And this is also, and I say practitioners, I said it loosely in that I'm not saying people who already have 
nurse or practitioner background. I'm saying like even somebody who's just a functional medicine specialist who just went through a course that isn't a, a graduate level. Um, and it doesn't include other ways like labs and consults. Like there's tons of different ways that you can also make an income through this. Um, and you can also, like I said, pa pass a little course creation. Um, oh, and the tax write-offs. We haven't even talked about tax write-offs or anything like that. Everybody should, and Angela can also back me up on this. She was, she was an entrepreneur before she and I met. Um, but I think everyone should have at least something as a side income because it's a huge tax write-off. Huge tax write-off. Um, yeah, Nikki's also, she's an entrepreneur before we met also actually, just not in this, in this exact field. But everyone should have something that you can write off. Last I checked last year in the state of Oklahoma, you can be at loss for five years. So you should always be able to position yourself, you know, I'm not a tax, I'm not a CPA or anything like that, but we do have a CPA. We do do everything completely legal. We do check, check all the boxes and make sure we do it perfect. Um, as a matter of fact, we do it so perfect that we were, I think we were audited last year and they were like, you're good to go. Here's your money. I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Woo. I didn't tell y'all that. I think we were audited. I don't know, but we didn't have to like submit anything. We just got a letter that said, hey, we checked everything from the government. We're like, okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> but like your internet, things that you're already going to be paying for, it can be a tax write-off. And we can actually, I had a lot of things I was going to kind of pull up on that board there and talk about, but I don't think we'll have time for it right now. But there's a lot of different ways that you can um, to do that. Or concierge. So there are a lot of people who, who actually want that more one-on-one, -on -one. they want that specialty, they want to feel like they actually have time with their provider and they will pay you know, for retainers. They'll pay, it is not, especially with the right training, it is not above you to have a you know, $2,500 client, $4,500 client and on a retainer system and being able to do concierge medicine for them or you know, treatment for them, even at the holistic level and run like GI maps and like there's tons of in-depth, like you can really go deep with these, with these individuals and help them. And if you only take five new patients on a month, each one being, you know, like a thousand dollars per or for, for like every time they sign on to a thousand dollars, you can easily just five new patients a month hit that time where you're helping people. And that's not very much like five new patients a month is not a huge, huge number by any means. And you could easily be having even just like 15K income, steady income, 15K per month. Um, and this is where I was going to actually write up some of those things, but we only have five more minutes left of the hour. So we won't actually be able to, to do that right now, maybe next time. And I'll probably have to speed up a little bit for our next meetings. Let me go ahead and answer. Um, it's not taking reliability that you're already taking on, correct? Or with your current job and P. Uh, functional medicine is its own field that anyone with a healthcare license can do. You still have to follow your license and training though. Exactly. Yep. And we will talk about that in depth. Um, I think with the, with the free course with the, with the next four days, you aren't saying, okay, let's take you off your meds and let your health deteriorate, but it all boils down to someone willing to make changes. Yeah. And as a caveat and kind of to piggyback on that, I love that she brought that up. Um, what I believe, you know, as you become the, you know, you're the provider, you, you choose how you want to kind of practice. What I like to do, especially things that have like rheumatoid arthritis, and we know that, you know, TMARDs are so harsh on patients, but we know that the disease gets a lot worse if they're not started on them earlier, is keeping them on the medicine. As their symptoms get better, whenever you start making those underlying changes, then working with rheumatologists to wean them off. And, you know, not, not saying that, you know, I, I don't, I don't recommend, or even I actually have a friend who I haven't spoke to her yet. It's kind of really, really new for her. So I haven't asked, but she actually, I didn't treat her, but, um, I, I helped her some in that, you know, she always had questions and stuff whenever she was going through it, but she had cancer and she is now cancer free just by implementing these, these strategies, by implementing functional medicine. That's not everybody's story. And I, I don't believe that we should say, 
don't go to your oncologist. And that is what she did. She said no to the oncologist completely. And I think that's so brave of her and her story is incredible. But like Angela said, like we have to find that balance. Like we're not anti, we're not anti-conventional medicine here. Um, there's just, there are, there are holes in it that this can actually heal people in so many different ways. Tyrese, you're right about the patient need and be, need and be the one to change, but those people are there looking for someone to help them or willing to pay for us coaching them for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Liability part of the, of course, is a concern. I think Lauren will talk us through that. Yes. Um, don't let overwhelm you yet. You're here for a reason. Oh, I love y'all. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. I really see this as, I mean, this, this already is like, y'all saw the numbers. Like it's, people are wanting this and needing this. Um, and it can make a huge, huge difference. Also, I look forward to learning more. Huge liability. Oh, yeah. I see what she's saying. Or white more, or uh, Nikki responded to that. Yeah, no, it's actually not. So it's it's less liability than with prescription medications and um, with conventional medicine. Now, I will say that, you know, getting get your own malpractice, and it, and it kind of depends. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the future, but nurse coaching and um, so you can practice completely without your license. You can do that completely without your license and you still want to stay within your, your standards of care, meaning that knowing that you are taking, you're using information that is evidence-based. And that's why this program is going to be different than a lot of the functional medicine, because they do sometimes just focus on clinician-based and just what, you know, a clinician has seen in their office versus evidence-based double-blind studies. And everything that I've put in, like I've, some things that I talk about, I tell you, this is clinician-based data, and you know you you can implement this as you feel. But there are tons of things out there that are very evidence-based. Um, and even if you did get your own malpractice, your like malpractice insurance, you're it's a much lower liability. So feel free to like you can unmute yourself and ask like, I guess kind of where your train of thought is on that and why why it feels like it's higher liability than regular practice or why it's high liability at all. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Sus. Can you, I think you're, are you unmuted or do I need to? Okay, you're talking to me, Tiny? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry about that. I feel like it's, um, like I said, it sounds like an amazing um, program, but when I say more liability, um, if you have a patient that has chronic illness, and of course I heard someone say, you're not just gonna take them off their medicine. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna do, um, of course, do no harm, but you are, I mean, we have a patient with cardiac problems and, you know, um, all these other problems that people come with. Um, I think that's a huge responsibility when they're, they're not, no, they're no longer seeing other specialists and we're trying to get them to implement things that are solely based on them making a change. I mean, that's some of the problems that we have in, in our practices right now, because many of us are trying to get the mindset, you know? And, and that's, like you said, that's sometimes related to a more deeper issue. Yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, and that's what you're helping them with. I don't know. I think some functional medicine standpoints, like I said, they are kind of anti-conventional medicine and they will say to take them off. I've seen, I know that that happens because I've seen patients who, you know, they've declined, like, like I said, my friend who declined, um, she declined any kind of chemo or even surgical intervention or anything. Um, I've had another friend who uh, she, well, she's a, I go to church with her and she declined anything. And I encouraged her, you know, I was like, do the healthy stuff, but stay with the rheumatologist because this can get worse. So, you know, anybody can, you can decide how, you, how anybody here wants to do that with themselves, but I agree with you. And I don't think you should tell them, don't go to your specialist. Another thing, and maybe I should make this clear now, a functional medicine practitioner, you're not replacing their primary care. You are an adjunct to them and to their health. As their blood pressure goes down and they don't need that blood pressure medication anymore, obviously congestive heart failure or something like that could, could be a very different scenario. And functional medicine doesn't treat everything. Some people do try to treat cancer and they do. And I will tell you that I, I got 
especially after my friend was healed and she has no cancer, my mind was really blown. I started looking into that myself. And what I found on evidence-based is that more people die whenever they deny chemo and they try to do natural treatment. There are some people who heal themselves, but the rates are not as good. To each their own, if you tell a patient, I don't, I don't think that I would probably recommend, like, I think it'd be awesome for people who know that they have a risk factor, like my mother, my aunt, all these other people, you know, my grandmother died of breast cancer. I want to know how do I decrease that risk? And you're telling them, like, I think that that would be an awesome niche practice and, you know, telling them you need to avoid these certain heavy metals. You need to avoid these toxins. You need to avoid these in your food to decrease your risk. You need to know about phytoestrogens. You need to know, you know, how they, how plastics play into that and phthalates and pesticides and teaching them those things to prevent I think that that would be an awesome course that would take off that you wouldn't even have to trade time for money on. And you can build that for people and straighten information, but you are no way telling them that you're treating cancer. I don't, I mean, I believe that there's limitations there and that's what, you know, that's what this, this course, and that's what I'm going to, I'm going to teach. And I'm so the patient sign a consent form or something, will you have something, yes. do, do will we have something in place stating some yes. things in our consent form? You know. I do recommend consent forms. I do recommend, you know, you can have, and we'll have all of those in the full course. Um, I'm glad, I'm super excited that you're asking these questions. Um, we do have that kind of in the full course. I don't think I go into the exact forms in the free one for the next four days, but yes, you would have that. You would still have HIPAA and making sure that you have the right, like if you're going to see people via telehealth, um, which I think is the best way because you don't have any kind of overhead that way. You don't have, you know, um, I'm going to stop share because I think that'll help my computer a little bit. Um, you don't have to like rent a building or anything like that. And a lot of people actually really like that because they're not having to take time to drive somewhere. They can just pop up their phone. They have like a 15 minute break at, at work or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but yes, you, you still have consent forms and those kind of things. But it's, it really is kind of overkill, like even having that. And like I said, if you're doing it, I mean, think about, I used to do, um, I don't recommend this, but I used to do beach, I, okay, I love beach body products. I still do, but I don't recommend doing like coaching or anything like that. Like the MLM stuff, I don't recommend it. Um, I think it's a lot of people have really great hearts and they mean well, but there's a lot of things tied into that. But you think about, you know, like even like a coach or something like that, they're not having, you know, Beach Body, even as a company, it's not having people sign, you know, that, oh, you're taking this supplement, so you have to sign something. You know what I mean? So I do recommend doing it as a provider and covering all of your bases, but it really is kind of, it really is kind of overkill. And I do not recommend that anybody say that you're, you're taking the place of a specialist. Can I say one more thing? So this kind of sounds like, um, this is really for uh, maybe a, there's a specialized, there are people out there that are, you're saying will pay for these services because really they're tired of conventional medicine and mm -hmm. they want they are wanting to do these things it's not like mm -hmm. you know it's, I've got, I'm, I'm not sure if i'm making sense but there are some people out there that don't want that other way and so those are the people that we're trying to help yeah exactly yeah yep. and your vibe attracts your tribe like you'll you'll end up finding people and the other part of that is not even just um Oh, Miss Annalisa's in. We're about over, sister. <laughs> I'll get you the replay. Um, and it's, you know, it's also about practicing in a way that you feel good. Like if this speaks to your heart and you want to help people in this way, then it's also about, you know, how you're, how you feel called to help people. Many mm -hmm. of us here, like we feel called to help people in this way. We don't want to just run people through, you know, see tons of patients and like literally just just the other day, I was telling my, my patient that, you know, I was telling her how I really like helping people at that deeper level, because like when you come in here under, I would normally say I work in the same place, um, but I'm there for the next six weeks. Um, when you come in here and you sit down, I say, okay, your blood pressure is this, we need to increase this medication. Your cholesterol is this, I need to increase this medication. Like I'm just titrating stuff. I'm not really like healing you or like the people that I have the biggest connection on are like you were saying, whenever we dive down deep and we, we help them with the underlying root causes of mindset or the people that I'm helping them like actually take them off of medications 
in a safe way. I'm not saying that anyone just stops medication, but actually helping them feel good about themselves and not setting them up where like in the future, we're gonna have titrate up in the future on the medication. I don't, I am not anti, no, I'm not anti conventional medicine, but I don't, I don't like the fact that sometimes I'm starting people on medication. And I personally, I've, I've read a lot of things about stat. Like, for example, I'm just gonna be, I'm going to be kind of transparent here. I've read a lot of things on statins that I don't necessarily like it either. You know, there's a lot of medications, Tylenol. I told you, I've read a lot of studies on sure. it. I don't necessarily like it. I try to avoid it. Like I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm the person that in order to take it, like before I take an ibuprofen, I'm going to be chugging water. I'm going to be finding out like, is there something triggering this? Like I personally don't like putting medicines in my body. I'm not against it when people need it. And whenever they don't want to dive down deep or do the testing, the allergy testing, that kind of stuff. Um, I think that that's a, that's a great place for them, but, but yeah, it's also just, if you feel that, if you feel called to, to be helping people that way. And the other exciting thing about it is that because people are, you know, this is not something that you have to have a medical license necessarily, but you can still help people on a really deep level. Um, you don't have to use, so if you're like in a restrictive state or something like that, you don't have to be bound up by that. You can have the freedom to, to practice how, how you feel called, if you feel called to do something like this. Um, what other questions y'all have? Thank you so much for, for, um, for adding that. Can you read mine? Did, oh, and I think I did, right? I read your Chinese. Make sure I didn't miss it. I, I think that we talked about it though. Yes, you did everything. You guys answered everything. And I pre I'm at the gym. <laughs> Sorry. So I appreciate all the comments. Yes, I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay. And finding out details on the full course. Yeah, I kind of plan to talk about it on the last day, um, but I can definitely. Tiffany, um, how did you find me? And we can, I mean, we can still talk and I can share um, I would just go into it right now. It's not that I'm trying to hide anything from anybody, um, but it's just, it's already a little bit past and um, I don't want to take anybody's, I don't want to take too much time for everybody. Don't flip and just do function medicine. You can incorporate that into your primary care sort of practice. Yeah, absolutely. You can. Yeah. Yep. Changes and get to the root cause, fix their problems. Don't just want medication. hundred <laughs> percent. That's why I'm sitting here researching it now. <laughs> no. And there's a real, like, it's, it really is incredible refuses statins. Yeah, a lot of people will refuse statins. And I've never been the provider. I've seen people say, I've literally had a physician tell me, oh, it's all in their head. Like I had a patient and I said, well, they don't tolerate statins. It gives them, it gives them um, too many mus muscular cramps. We've tried CoQ10. I've tried weaning them up. And they're like, oh, it's all in their head. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> like then I just had like, then I've had like dozens of patients with it all in their head and it's all coincidence. Like, no, it's not just in their head and there's science behind it, right? Like it depletes the CoQ10. Sometimes if you put them on CoQ10 and replace that, then they can actually tolerate the statin. But a lot of people are still anti-statins. Um, and I mean like metformin and the recalls and all that stuff. I mean, there's just a lot of resistance there. And even I myself, metformin is very controversial. Um, I've actually, some people will tote it as a miracle drug. People who are in the functional functional med world, some people tote it as a miracle drug. Some people say that it's carcinogenic and it's horrible for you. And I don't, that's like a really controversial one. It really is. Um, it's that one, I don't know, that one has a lot of controversy to it. Um, thanks to Rick. Crying baby. Oh my gosh, she's got a new baby just like me. I just love it. Oh, she's so beautiful too. She's a beautiful baby. Um, prime example I can share. My mom is type one diabetic. She will always need to be on insulin, mm -hmm. but her A1C has been over eight for years. She implemented tons of my diet and diabetic hacks and whatnot. And her A1C was 6.7 this last time. They still see her endo and primary care providers, but also to control of her diabetes. And how much are you helping with like inflammation in the body? Because I mean, most y'all probably know that, that all the sugar going through our blood, it it's like little knives in there and hurting. It's actually diabetes is actually a vascular system disease and all that inflammation and how much that is decreasing that and giving her longevity in life. And especially when we educate patients on that and, and they know that, I mean, they're all, you know, a lot of them actually want to make those changes. 
Um, so awesome. This has been so much fun, guys. Yay. I love it. I haven't done a launch in a while where we're like talking and um, teaching about new things. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. This is so much fun. Um, does anyone have any other questions? And then Tiffany, she's still, yeah. Yes, I'm still here. So I found out about it through um, listening to your podcast. Awesome. Okay, great. Yay. <laughs> thank you so much for listening, by the way, like everyone here, like, thank you so much for however you found me. Like, I really appreciate you showing up and um, I appreciate, you know, however you kind of supported me on different platforms. Um, literally do love doing this and it, it legitimately fills my heart. Like I shared with my girls, um, everyone who's in which some of my stickers have fallen here. Yep. They fall on. I got to pick them up, but I have like changes in the world as a result of nurse entrepreneurs. And I share this with all my girls, but I have like everybody's name and their mission and what they're changing in people's lives. Um, like some of my girls are decreasing rates of first trimester miscarriages, um, relationships through the hard times. I mean, there's a lot, like there's, you know, there's some people that will do more of like a life coaching focus. And this is not, you know, this course is, we're talking about functional medicine here, but that's still a huge part of it, right? Like we were talking about with the, with children and mindset and like as a child, like you, you know, the, the traumas and the big T's and stuff that can make a big difference. And just hormone therapy that, that some women are helping with. And I mean, there's so many, I say women, you know, men can do this too. It's just that your vibe protection type and everyone. So, well, not everyone actually. Um, I have a married couple that I'm working with and they're helping people with, um, they're helping people naturally decrease um, stress and anxiety. But I have all of those missions that like, cause I, I literally think about like on the days that it's kind of hard to show up. I think about all of the other women and men who are making a change in other people's lives as a result of this. And that's, what legitimately keeps me going, legitimately keeps me going because we can change so many lives in so many different ways with functional medicine, but also in other ways with, you know, courses or like there's, you know, there's tons of different things that I, that I help people in, in teaching. So, um, so yeah, Tiffany, let's, um, but I will definitely show you, we can even, um, do you, are we friends on Facebook or anything like that? Um, I haven't, I just, I just found it today. And okay. it just so happened that you had this course starting. So I signed up for it. Um, awesome. But yeah, if we can reach out because um, the next few days, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it live. And so I just okay. want to make sure that I'm very interested in it though, because I do, um, I have a, I practice in a wellness clinic and I do, tr we try our hardest not to prescribe when we don't have to. And so um, we've, we've, what I have been treating lately is a lot of um, vitamin D deficiency because mm -hmm. it shows up as anxiety and depression in a lot of women. And so by optimizing it, they are no longer anxious or depressed without going on medication. So I've always been interested in it, like in the last two years when I learned about it. And so seeing it happening in my practice with just that one step, it has, you know, made me want to do more. So yeah. 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 And that's so true. Like so many of us get like taste of it, right? Like my taste started with my personal journey that I shared with y'all. Um, but then when you start helping people, it's like, you get so excited. Right. It is. Just, it is. It's, isn't it so much like I celebrate with my patients when we're pulling medications off. Definitely. It makes yeah. me feel so like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I have, I'm not, I'm not, you know, anti against when they come back to me and they're they're happier because I prescribed something or they're feeling better or healthier because I prescribed, prescribed something but I'm giddy whenever they're better and we're taking off medications like I'm giddy like I I don't know it feels right like I you know what I mean like I feel like it mm -hmm. just literally is right with with nature mm -hmm. with like our being just like we have a propensity for spiritual health and how how important that is I feel like being natural and going back to to natural treatment is just exciting for us. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's how we're, it's how we're made. Yeah. And there's just a natural pull for that. So yeah, that's exciting. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and find me on Facebook or I'll find you. Um, you can also, uh, Dr. Lauren APRN at gmail.com. And you can send me an email. That's my 
private email, I tend to check it a little bit more, but you can go ahead and also email me there if you can't find you on Facebook. Sometimes it's hard, but yeah, we'll definitely connect. And any other questions that you'll have? Did you say Dr. Lauren, APRN? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. At Gmail. DR as in the brief. Thank you. Yeah, DR Lauren. Lauren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why I thought of that when she said it. I thought, oh, I might, you might spell it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. But thank you so much for being interactive. Um, we're going to take Wednesday off. And that's because my family and I always go to church on Wednesday. Um, and then we're going to be back Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, and then Saturday, uh, I blocked off, because I can, I blocked off a little bit more time for all of this. So we can go, we can answer a lot more questions and go a lot deeper and everything. But I'm excited, guys. I really have some, like, we're going to talk, I think, or next, I think tomorrow, I'm pretty sure, is going to be talking about gut dysbiosis and how we can correct that naturally and make huge, huge changes with people with recommendations. Like it's, it really is mind blowing how much of a difference you can make. And this was a big part of my story um, and how, you know, I, how I was able to help, help myself and uh, probably Angela's going to be able to speak to this one a lot too. So, you know, we didn't build this together, but she's going to be able to speak to it a lot. That's one of the pillars of health. And we're going to talk about, I think actually the next thing's coming up is we're going to be talking about autoimmunity, the three the triad of that in functional medicine and how you correct that. And then we're also gonna be talking about uh, gut health and, and getting that alignment and how many different things that that can help and they play a big part, a piece of the, of the equation. Um, and this is just like iceberg. Like I have spent, probably honestly, I have worked more than I usually ever, ever do in my business to be totally transparent with you, but it's been building out this course um, and like comparing data and, and, and different uh, different people and studies and making sure that it's not, you know, that it's actually peer reviewed evidence-based studies. So, so I'm excited to be sharing it. Thank you so much for jumping on guys. Um, I'll see you back Thursday. So one day off, and then we'll see each other Thursday at 5 PM and then we'll go for another hour, an hour then. So if y'all have any questions though, you can also feel free. Anyone here can, can message me, uh, send me, Facebook message, email, whatever it is. And, um, and I'm open book. I'll, I'll share whatever and help you all in any way that I can. So thanks for jumping on guys. Talk to you later. Bye.